First, let's go over the homework. For the questions on page two, do you have questions? Anyone want to ask me about the questions on page two? Questions for page two? If not, we're moving on to page three. Do you have questions for page three? Okay, page four is a bit harder. So I'm going to go through uh, this section with you. There are 11 mistakes in the use of future verbs. The first one is already corrected. There are 10 more. So the first mistake is here. So we only have to start with line four. I'm looking forward to being there, but I am also a little afraid. What will, what will I find when I get, this will is wrong. The will should be here. What will I find when I get to America? Will the Americans be arrogant and unfriendly? Will I make any friends? Will I be happy? Will I be happy? My best friend back home in Nigeria said, you won't, this should be future, I, you won't make any real friends when you are there. This should be present tense, when you are there. I'm not so sure, I guess I will find out. I guess I will find out. I have been here in New York for a month now, and I have found that things are a lot different from what I expected. The majority of people here are friendly. They go out of their way to help you if you need it. My American friends invite me to go places soon. I will go hiking. I will go hiking with a group from my dormitory. Two of the ideas I had about the United States, however, seem to be true. One is that Americans pay more attention to the rules than people do in Nigeria. For example, American drivers seem, not will seem, seem to obey traffic laws more often than Nigerian drivers do. The other idea is about the American family. In Nigeria, the family is very important, but so many, uh, so many Nigerian people think family means nothing in the United States. I think it might be true since my American friends almost never mention their parents or their brothers and sisters anyway. I'm going to have a chance to see a real American family. I will go with my roommate. I will go with my roommate, Susan, to spend Thanksgiving break with a family in Pennsylvania. When I see her family, maybe I'm going to understand more. So those are all of the mistakes. Okay. Okay. And the first half of page five, do you have questions about the first half of page five?
Okay, if you don't have questions, uh, then we will begin this week's lecture. This week's lecture is on two parts. Uh, the perfect aspect and the perfect progressive aspect. So let's talk about the perfect aspect. As we talked about last time, with the progressive, In the part of the sentence that is the verb, the first word carries the tense, the second word carries the aspect. So this is past progressive. So for the future aspect, it's the same thing. In the part of the sentence that is the verb, the first word tells you this is the past, had, have, or has, will have. So this is past. And the second part tells you this is the perfect. Now note that this word type is not past tense. This is what we call the past participle. When you learn any language, especially a Western language, the verb will carry many meanings. And so you have to remember at least three parts to the verb. In English, you have to remember the present, the past, and this thing, the past participle. Uh, in Chinese, we call this fensi. And if you remember studying this in high school, your teacher probably told you this is called PP, right? That's what PP stands for. Um, we talked about this a little bit in the first week. A participle is a verb that can be used as a verb or an adjective. So in the first week, I gave this example. I was surprised. In this sentence, the word surprised, is it a verb or is it an adjective? It could be both, right? Because if it's a, an adjective, it's, it's like saying, I was sad, right? Sad is the adjective. But it could be a verb, right? Uh, I was called by my mom. So my mom called me, right? So in this case, it would be a verb. So the word surprise can be both an adjective and a verb. It takes two parts. It is a participle. So how do you know that a sentence is perfect aspect? The second, or I guess the last word in the verb part of the sentence is a past participle. Now, the the thing about past participles in English is that they are often irregular. Many, many, many exceptions. Uh, so the most common type just looks like the past tense, at ed, right? Like this word, typed. Type, typed, typed. Present, past, past participle. But sometimes uh, you have words like drive, drove, Driven, ride, road, ridden. And it looks like you have a kind of, why can't you guys see that? Sorry. Okay. Jeez, I wonder what, what's going on here. Okay, so it looks like you have some kind of pattern, right? Um, but then you have strange words like uh, lie, lay, lay, or I guess they should be laid. I lay, hang on. 
Yeah, you're right, right. It should be length. Yeah. So again, the pattern disappears. Um, so if you're not sure what the past participle of a verb is and you need to use it, look up a dictionary. So in any case, this is how you form a perfect aspect. Use of the word have to tell you the tense, past, present, future, and then use of the past participle of the verb that you're using in the sentence. The question is, why would you use the perfect aspect? What does it mean? So often the question that I get is, what is the difference between the past tense and the present perfect? So these two. What is the difference between these two? I have before and then the before. Oh, you're right. Sorry. It should be this one. I have had. Yes. So what's the difference between these two? Uh, Rubo, come without a home and trying to take my job. I already typed it. I typed inside the subject, but I didn't really mention it. But both of them tell you that you did something. Right. I typed, I did it, it's finished, it's done. I have typed, I did it, it's finished, it's done. So what's the difference? The difference is, remember, aspects, uh, type, have to do with the surrounding sentences, especially the next sentence. An aspect like progressive, jing jing si, perfect, wan chen si, and uh, perfect progressive, wan chen jing si, tell you about the relationship between sentences. So the perfect aspect, wan chen si, tells you that finishing this action influences what happens next or it answers a question about what happened before. So the difference between these two sentences would be, for example, I typed a sentence just means I typed a sentence. We don't know the relationship between this sentence and what happens before or what happens after. But if I say I have typed a sentence, that means that the fact that this is done is important. So maybe the next sentence would be, I have typed a sentence. That's enough for today. Time to go to bed. Right, I finished. It was a lot of work typing a sentence. Or perhaps it's an answer to a previous question. Uh, maybe someone asks, how much did you write today? And you might say, I have typed a sentence so far. Right. The fact that you have finished typing the sentence is answering the question. So this is when you would use the perfect tense. Oh, sorry, perfect aspect. Um, so just like every other aspect, English has three versions of the perfect aspect. I had typed. I have typed, or in some cases, I uh, like uh, she has typed. And then I will have typed. Past, present, future. So remember, I keep saying like the first word is the tense and the second word is the aspect. Well, again, the future tense is kind of weird. In English, only the future tense has two words. Um, so for the future tense of anything, it's always uh, 
the first two words tell you the tense and the last word tells you the aspect. Now, as you might have guessed, whether or not you finish something, how important is that? It's very open to interpretation. Different people will think that uh, maybe you should emphasize that you finish something. Different people will think it's not that important. For example, I just said, different people will think you should emphasize that you finished something. Some people will say that you have finished something. So it's open to interpretation. Uh, in other words, if you can give a good explanation for why you do or do not use the perfect aspect, uh, then it's fine. There really is no 100% rule that says here you have to use the perfect aspect. Except for one. The only place you should always use the perfect aspect is. The word become. Become means change. So if you're not talking about the process of the change, if you're only talking about before and after, then you should always use the perfect aspect to emphasize that the change has finished. But again, English has exceptions to every rule. And the exception to this rule Okay, first of all, the rule is there is no rule specifically about per, uh, perfect aspect or simple past tense. The exception to that rule is the word become, but the exception to the exception is when become means suit. So, for example, in the sentence that dress becomes you, it does not mean the dress turns into you. It means the dress suits you. It fits you. It makes you look good. So because the, the verb become in this sentence is not talking about change, you do not have to use the perfect aspect. And in fact, you probably should not use the perfect aspect. Suit is not a change. Suit is not an action. It's a description using a verb. There is a, another minor exception, um, which it's fun to remember, but you don't have to know it. It's not going to appear on the test. Did you guys see Oppenheimer? Yeah. So like, Oppenheimer says a famous line, right? When he sees the bomb go off, he says, I am become Shiva destroyer of worlds. Now, wait, that doesn't look right. Shouldn't it be, I have become? Yes, it's true, it should be. This is from an older translation. Uh, he's quoting an older translation. So this is an older kind of grammar. Right. So for all other situations, Depending on the context, you can emphasize something has finished or you can leave it out. When you're speaking English, nobody cares. So this is the perfect aspect, once in suit. Questions? Yes. Uh, 
Right. So the question is, when I say, when I use the perfect aspect and I say, I have typed a sentence, it feels like I'm not done talking. It feels like, I'm oh, sorry, not this one. Here, this one. Yes. It feels like I'm not done talking. It feels like there's more information to come, right? And that's because the perfect aspect is used in connection with other sentences, in a relationship with other sentences. If I begin a sentence with the perfect aspect, that means that the more information will come afterwards. It has to have a relationship with something. But if I start with, with another sentence, and I end with a perfect aspect, then maybe this is the last sentence. Maybe the extra information came before. So yes, your language sense tells you you can't simply use the perfect aspect alone, and this is why. All right, thank you. Other questions? Okay, if not, let's move on to the perfect progressive. This is technically a complete sentence, but usually the sentence itself will have more information. If the progressive aspect emphasizes the continuing of an action and the perfect aspect emphasizes the completing of an action, then the perfect progressive aspect emphasizes how long it took you to complete that action. Another way to say this is how much you had to continue to do until you finished that action. So if we draw this, I'm going to try to draw this. If progressive is like is like uh, is like this, and if perfect is wait is like this, then perfect progressive. I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do is like this. You don't just care how it continued. You don't just care how it ended. You care how long it took you to get to the end. It's not just the journey. It's not just the ending. It's how you took the journey to get the ending. So this sentence, I have been typing all day. You need this kind of information to tell the reader the length of time it took you. Perfect progressive is about effort. It's about continuing to do things or things that happened over a period of time and you, you want them, you want to know when it will end. If you say, I was typing all day, let me write that down. If you say, I was typing all day, then the next sentence would probably be, uh, so I turned my phone off to not get distracted. Right, it, the action is continuing, and progressive is about the continuing and any possible interruptions or things that happen in the middle. I turned off my phone so that nothing would interrupt my typing. But if I say I have been typing all day, the next sentence would be something like, My hands are so sore. My hands are tired. 
because it's emphasizing that it is it has been continuing for the whole day. And then, of course, if you say the perfect aspect I had typed all day, the next sentence might be um, It was a very productive day. I typed a lot. This is actually, I think, the best way to learn grammar. Think of examples. Examples give you situations. Situations give you stories. Stories will help you remember. So let's move this. Last week, we talked about typing all day and not being interrupted. Earlier, we talked about finishing the typing for the whole day, and so you produced a lot. Now we're talking about continuing to type all day and the effect that has on your hands. Can you sense the difference? Right, so let's try another example. Someone give me a verb, please. Give it the tool. No, I don't want to say. Another verb? Actually, no, we can't do singing. Okay, let's do singing. So First one is progressive aspect. She said Taylor Swift was singing all day. Nobody could talk to her because she was singing. Right? It's the idea of continuing and interruption. The second one is perfect aspect. Taylor Swift had sung all day. Now it was time to rest. She finished a whole day of singing. Now that that's done, she can take a rest. The third one, perfect progressive. Taylor Swift had been singing all day. How can she still talk? She had been singing for so long, it must have some effect on her. She must feel tired. How does she still have a voice? How can she still talk? Can you sense the difference? Right. Now, again, aspects are not a question of logic. Aspects are a question of emphasis. What do you want to emphasize? Do you want to emphasize that she was continuing to sing all day? Do you want to emphasize that she has finished a day of singing? Or do you want to emphasize the effort it took to, for her to sing all day? All three of these sentences describe the same thing. But what part of that situation do you want to emphasize? Okay, so let me give you the formal um, structure of the perfect progressive. This part. Have tells you the tense. This is past tense. Uh, so perfect, progressive, the first half is perfect. So you need a have plus a past participle. The past participle uh, cannot be the main verb because you then have a progressive that you have to write. So you need a new verb in the middle. And when you need a new verb, you can grab a be verb. Be is the only verb in English that uses a different 
word for the present tense, right? It looks like be, but then you have is, are, was, were, been. This is the only verb in English that does this crazy stuff. So you want to remember the past participle, bin. By the way, what does B mean? B has a meaning. Do you know what it means? B means to exist. I think, therefore, I am. Okay, so first word is have, and it tells you the tense. The second word is be, and it needs to be past participle to give you the perfect part of perfect progressive. And then finally, uh, B plus ING is progressive. Right? Right. So have plus past participle is perfect. B plus this is the present participle is progressive. So you put it all together. This is the past perfect progressive. Okay, let's do this again. So it's called the perfect progressive, right? So, okay, let me again see if I can draw this. The perfect part is this, have plus past participle. The progressive part is this, be plus present participle. And then the first word tells you, is it past, present, or perfect? So there are three parts to writing the perfect progressive. Past, present, or future have plus bin. And then past participle of be plus the present participle of the verb. Okay, if you understand, please raise your hand. Have加那个过去分词，然后进行式的公式是B加现在分词，所以两个加起来就是你要用的是B的过去分词来搭配Have，然后最后第一个字刚你讲时间，这是过去，所以这公式就是过去完成进行式。Good, good, we're getting there. Okay, great. Um, so when you use the perfect progressive, you have to make sure that the verb you choose, the action you're talking about, can continue. Some verbs cannot continue. For example, This is not a good sentence. I have been knowing this. You either know or you don't know. You can't continuously know because no is not an action. No is a status. It is a description. Um, but again, every rule in English has an exception. You might recognize this one.
can you say love? Like when you love someone or something, it is also not an action. It is a description. You're describing your attitude towards that person or thing. But McDonald's can, can say, I'm loving it. Why? Because here the word loving does not mean love. Here the word loving means enjoying. And you can continue to enjoy it. Um, you know, advertisers, marketing like to use grammar exceptions because they, it's easier to, for people to remember. So, for example, Apple back in the day had an ad that said, think different. Is the grammar correct? Shouldn't it be think differently? In this case, the word different is an adjective, but the meaning is a noun. Here, the word different means something different. So, you know, English grammar, exceptions everywhere. Um, okay, that's not really related to what we're talking about. We're talking about make sure that the verb you choose for the progressive is something that happens over time, that it's not a simple description of a status. Okay, do you have questions about the perfect progressive? I should give you all three, sorry. Um, I had been talking for a while. I have been talking and I will have been talking for a while. So past present, uh, sorry, past perfect progressive, present perfect progressive, future perfect progressive. Okay, that's it. Questions? Okay, if you don't have questions, let's do some practice. Um, page five, bottom. Let's see, it says, there are 10 mistakes in the use of past tense verbs, okay? So it's always in the past, maybe simple past, maybe past progressive, maybe past perfect, maybe past perfect progressive. And it says the first mistake is already corrected or the first mistake has already been corrected, right? Different emphasis. So there are nine more. How long is this? Oh, it's not that long. Wait, okay, yeah, so there will be at most nine mistakes. Uh, I'll give you nine mistakes, shouldn't be too hard, right? I'll give you nine minutes. And you can discuss with your classmates, your group mates, you can call your grandmother, I don't care. But if you do call your grandmother, please go outside.
Okay, let's check your answers. The bottom of page five. So last week when we checked answers, I gave many different answers, possible answers. But here we have the, well, I guess most of the full context. We know the relationship between sentences. So the possible answers will be fewer than last week. Let's see. I've had a tiring day today, but I just had to write. It's our three year anniversary. Sejun and I have been married. Have been married. Three years as of today. Uh, okay, technically this should be, uh, we'll, we're going to learn this next week. This is passive tense. When you, okay, so the verb marry, right? I marry her. She married me. But it's, okay, so if, if, that's not the way to say this. Get married. Marry myself. Okay, there are actually two ways of looking at the verb marry. You can say, I marry her, she marries me. Or you can say, The efficient married us. The person doing the wedding made me and her married. So the word marry here means to make two people a couple, an official couple. So like the efficient might be a, a pastor, might be a priest, might be a judge. The person doing the wedding married us. So this is the active form, 主动句. If you don't want to say who married you, you can say we were married, which would be the passive form. We're going to learn this next week. So, you know, if you get this question wrong, uh, there are no points anyway. Have been married. So this is a uh, present perfect in the passive voice. Three years as of today. Um, as of means up to, up to today. So maybe this is the time for me to take stock of my situation, which means to look back at what I have. The obvious question is whether I'm happy I got married. The answer is absolutely. When I remember what my life was like, not has been like, what my life was like. Uh, the main issue is it used the present perfect. She's talking about her past life but she used the present perfect. That's wrong. You can say my life had been like, that's fine. Or you can say my life was like, but you cannot say has been. It has to be in the past. Before we were married, I realize now how lonely I, again, I was or I had been. You cannot say I have been. This should be in the past. I was before, or I had been before. I used to, it's missing a D, I used to. Again, it's in the past. Uh, used to means had the habit or often happened. I used to have some problems with his family, but now I gotten is past participle, so it's missing a half. I have, right? This is now, so it's present tense. I have really gotten to know him. This is the only answer. I have gotten to know him. 
I love spending time with them. I, I've even learned have plus past participle. So this should be learned. Learned some Korean. And Sejun is a wonderful guy. When we were dating, I didn't know how he would. Okay, so right now they are married. So when they were dating, this was in the past, right? We were dating. So if you want to talk about the future from the past, you have to say would. At that time in the past, she was thinking about the future. If you simply say will, that means she's right now looking at the future. But it's not right now. It was in the past she was thinking about the future. So this has to be would. How he would behave after we got married. Okay, so technically this is acceptable. But the best answer would be after we... had gotten married. The whole sentence is in the past. And she's thinking about what will happen after marriage. So it's emphasizing that this action has been completed. So past completion, put those together, it's past perfect. We had gotten married. I thought, again, the past, I would or I'd have to do all the housework. But I, this should be didn't have any reason. There's so far we, from, from the information that we have, there's no reason to use the progressive. It doesn't seem like something will interrupt this uh, action. And in fact, this action is have. Can you progressively have something? I have a car. Can you say I am having a car? You can't unless you're saying, unless the next word is an adjective, right? I'm having fun. Uh, but this is not an adjective. Reason is an actual thing. So you can't say I'm having a reason. So I didn't have any reason. Okay, questions about this uh, large section? Yes. Sorry? Uh, from where? All of them, okay, very quickly. I've had a tiring day today, but I just had to write to the university. So you and I have been married. Line two, have been married. Three years as of today, so maybe this is the time for a big stock in my situation. The question is whether I got married. The answer is when I remember what my life had been like or was like. Had been like or was like. It has to be some kind of past tense. Or it's a quarter soon. Before we were married, I realized now how lonely I had been or I was. Again, it has to be some kind of past tense. I have been or I had been or I was before. I used to, still in the past, used to. Have some problems with his family, but now I have. I have really gotten to know them. I love spending time with them. I've even learned, have learned some Korean. And Sejun is a wonderful guy. When we were dating, I didn't know how he would, how he would behave after we had gotten married. Had gotten married. I thought I would, I would have to, I thought I would have to do all the housework, but I didn't have 
any reason. I didn't have any reason. OK, OK, good. Other questions? You know, life can move very fast. Please pay attention. OK, next batch of questions, eight questions. Correct the errors, eight questions. Uh, I'll give you five minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Question one. Hang on, hang on. Hold on, hold on. Actually, no, there should be a better way to do it. Okay, question one. Since I came to this country, I... Yes, I... Yes, thank you. I have been learning. So it's emphasizing the effort and the complete time of this learning process. That's the only answer. Number two, I... arrived here only a short time ago. I have been here since last Friday. You normally would not say I have arrived here only a short time ago because um, using have arrived is emphasizing the completing of the action of arriving. But here, the rest of the sentence emphasizes something different. The rest of the sentence is emphasizing the length of time between arriving and now. So it doesn't fit the idea of completing something. Now, I have been here is technically perfect progressive. Is that right? Have, yes, it's perfect progressive have been, and then instead of a present participle, you add an adjective in here. It's uh, the status of being in a place. So one thing you, some people would try to do is say, I have been being here, which is wrong. You, um, a status cannot be progressive. So you'd simply just add the adjective. Number three, how long have you been living here? Been here for. And then the second half, I have been here for almost two years. So this is very interesting, right? The question and the answer use, uh, both you've used the perfect some kind of perfect aspect. Wait, I think I got this wrong. Sorry, this is perfect. It's not perfect progressive, it's perfect. Right, to be means to exist. So I have existed, and then you need more information here. Same thing, I have existed in this place for almost two years. So bo both sides are asking, the question is in perfect, and so the answer is also in perfect aspect. Right, the question, the answer matches the question. Number four, why, wait, wait, why you know have been in class, hang on. So why have you not been in class? for the last couple of days. So yes, emphasizing the completion. It's been two days that you have missed class. You have completed two days outside of class. The situation is getting serious. I am now knocking on your door asking you why you were not in class. Yes. Right, so you're asking me why is the answer not, uh, why were you not in class, right?
Oh, why do some people use the uh, like this? Or, you know, like, like this? Right. So, especially in spoken English, when it's clear what you mean, then sometimes uh, you'll say it faster. So, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. Uh, and so when you turn around and you write this down, it looks like this. And so I had, I had, I had, I had, and I. But you can tell from, okay, so first of all, I, it must be I have. There's no other choice. But I could mean one of two things, right? It could mean I had, or it could mean I would. You would have to look at the context to hold it. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you. If you have questions, please ask. Right, so question four, how, why have you not been in class, et cetera? Question five, I have been coaching a soccer team for the last two months. So for the last two months, it gives you the length of time. All of this time, for all of this time, I was coaching. And it's it's not just two months, it's the last two months up to now. So I'm thinking back on the last two months and all I can remember is coaching these little brats kicking soccer. And I'm so tired of these two months. So I would use the uh, past progressive, sorry, perfect progressive. Number six, there's, there's more than one error here. My grandfather lived, simple, simple past, in a small village in Italy when he was a child. Why is it simple past? because there is no relation to other sentences. Remember, perfect aspect is emphasizing completion in relation to other sentences. This first sentence has no relation to other sentences. So using a simple past is enough. So my grandfather lived in a small village in Italy when he was a child. At 19, he moved. Same reason. No relation to other sentences. To Rome, where he met and married my grandmother in 1957. My father was born in Rome in 1960. I was born in Rome in 1989. Every single sentence is a simple sentence. There is no relation to the other sentences. It's just one thing after another. If the author had said something like, uh, well, no, there really is no relation. I can't come up with an example. There's no relation here. Okay, so it, this part, maybe if this sentence was reversed, I can't because it's the same year. Uh, yeah, this sentence is very carefully written. It has to be simple past. There's, there's no way to form a relationship between any of these sentences. Seven. I'm, I have been living in my cousin's apartment since I arrived here. It is very small and we share the bedroom. I need my own place, but I haven't found one 
so far. So the first sentence should be pretty clear. This sentence is describing something that begins when the author arrives and continues up to today. So the beginning should be in the past, a simple past, I arrived. And continuing to today, emphasizing the continuing uh, would be perfect progressive. The next sentence is describing the place. It doesn't matter if it's past, present, or future. It's always. It's outside of time. So we use the simple present. It is very small, and we... Nothing interrupts the action of sharing the bedroom. It's continuing. There's no comparison with something that interrupts it. So you don't need the progressive. You can simply use the simple present. It's something that always happens. Nothing is changing it. If you need something or the author needs something also outside of time, in her current situation or in his current situation, the author always needs this thing. But this part is inside of time. The author keeps trying to find another place. They try, they fail, they try, they fail. This is inside of time. So you need to specify what kind of time. It's the present. The author is still doing this. But every failure is a completion of an action. So it is present perfect. Number eight, when I was a child. Reminds me of a good joke by John Mulaney. For many years, I was a child. Okay. I thought, I thought you were going to already say the joke. The joke is everybody was a child for many years. Okay. Yeah. When I was a child, I had lived with my grandmother instead of my parents. This should be I live. Again, simple descripting, a descriptive sentence, no relation with other sentences so far. Grandpa had died. Uh, but again, because this is a question of emphasis, you can also simply use the simple past. Before I was born. So I never knew him. Grandma raised me alone. The rest is good. So why would you use past perfect? Because it is in relation to the second half of the sentence. Right? This first thing happens. This second thing happens. What is the relationship between these two? The author is emphasizing that before the author was born, their grandpa had already died. The action of dying had finished before the author was born. It had been completed. So the most accurate version is had died. Okay, questions about these eight. Uh, do you want me to explain one of them again? Which one? No, please, which one? One to eight, which one? Eight, okay. So uh, number eight is similar to number six at the beginning. A simple sentence is not related to any other sentence. There's no need to use progressive or perfect or perfect progressive. So when I was a child, I simply lived with my grandmother instead of my parents. For the same reason, the third sentence is correct. This has nothing to do with the other sentences. The question comes in the second sentence. There are two things happening here, right? The first thing, grandpa dies. The second thing, the author doesn't know their grandfather. In terms of the time, 
in order for the second sentence to be true, the first, sorry, this, for the second point to be true, the first point has to finish before the author is born. If the grandfather was still in the middle of dying when the author was born, there is a small chance that the author could have met and remembered their grandfather. So in order for this, I never knew him to be true, the grandfather must have finished dying before the author was born. Therefore, the most accurate answer is, my grandpa had died before I was born. The whole story is in the past. Was a child, lived, raised, all in the past. So this has to be had, past tense, had. And therefore, this has to be was, past tense. Okay, great. Other questions? Yes, six. This one? No, 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 this one. All right? Okay, so. Yes, the answer is I was, uh, or my father was born. That is the answer. Ah, okay. So this is something, again, that we, we are going to talk about next week. But in fact, the word born is a past participle. The, the whole word is bear, bore, born. But we don't usually use the first two. To, you would use the word bear in like to bear a child. Yes, which means to uh, become pregnant with a child. No, 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 to give birth to a child. So bear is the present tense, bore is the past tense, and born is the past participle. Okay? Right, and so the, the noun is birth. Other questions? Number four. Can I say why haven't you been? Yes, you can. So the the most formal way of saying this is have you not? But uh, because like th the order changed because this is a question. In a statement, you would say you have not, and so people would shorten this to you haven't. And therefore, you can take this and use it in the question. Why haven't you been in class is also fine. Good, thank you. Other questions? OK, what's next? That's a lot of questions. You know what? I think you guys are very smart. I think you can do these 11 questions in four minutes.
Okay, let's compare answers. I was very nice and gave you an extra minute. Question one, I have been studying here since last January. Number two, by the time Hassan returned to his country, he had been away from home for more than three years. Number three, after I graduate, I am going to return to my hometown. I buy my car after my graduation. Mm. Right. Usually in English, we like to use simple verbs instead of nouns. Number four, by the end of the 21st century, Man will have discovered the cure for the common cold. So first of all, the word man just means people, humans. This is an older textbook. I'm sorry for the sexism. Uh, secondly, why is it will have discovered? Because the point of the discovering is you are then able to cure the cold. So the point is not to discover. The point is, what do you do with that discovery? So in fact, you are emphasizing the completion of the discovery. You have finished discovering, so you can use that knowledge to make medicine. So it should be, will have discovered. Number five. I want to get married, but I haven't met the right person yet. Number six, I have seen that movie three times, and now I want to see it again. Now, again, every rule has an exception. I am wanting to has one usage, one place where it's correct, which is sometimes you're not sure if you really want to. So I'm wanting to do something means I'm thinking about doing something. It's one step below actually wanting to do it. Now we don't want to do 就有时候你不确定到底要不要你在想说你要不要那个时候你可以用 wanting I am wanting But if you really want something just use the simple tense a simple aspect 7 I I I do not like my job If you say I am not like my job that means that you and your job are very different my brother wants me to quit. I think he is right. Again, if you say I am thinking, that means you're not sure what you think, but maybe you think he is right. I use the past tense. Uh, the whole sentence is in present tense, so any kind of variation should be in the present tense. Number eight. While I am studying or I study, one of these two, either one is fine. Tonight, I'm going to listen to classical music. So the second half is correct. Um, so I am studying, this is quite obvious because you, it's while, right? You're continuing to do something. But why can you use simple present while well, I study? Because in fact, whether you say I am studying or you say I study, you are in fact talking about the future. So this goes back to last week. 
you can say, I will study, I am studying, or I study in the future. So either one is fine. Number nine, we washed the dishes and cleaned up the kitchen after our dinner guests had left. Or again, because it's only a question of emphasis, you can simply say left. Had left is more accurate. Number 10, my neighbors are Mr. and Mrs. Sanchez. I have known them ever since I was a child. So again, the relationship between these two ideas. I was a child, I met them, and I have not forgotten them all the way to today. So I have known them. Well, that's not right. Um, I, I met them when I was a child. And that status has not changed. Right? That thing has finished. I knew them, and now I say I have known them. 11, what is this? Many scientists believe there is a major earthquake in California in the near future. So there will be a major earthquake in California in the near future. Okay, questions about these 11? Yes. Number, number 11. In the near future is the future, so this should be future tense. There will be. Okay, other questions? Okay, homework. Please do these questions up to the end of page eight. Next week, we'll begin by comparing answers. Okay.